All right, Ninja Nerd, so for the last um, arrhythmia here that we're going to take a look at, this is the one that, if you see it, um, you know you don't want to forget this one. This one is a very dangerous arrhythmia. So let's go ahead and take a look here. What do we do? We see this uh, rhythm. You obviously know you don't even like care about determining the rate. If you see this, this is the kind of thing that you just need to burn into your memory. Don't ever forget it. Whenever you see these like squiggly type of like appearance here on the EKG, there's no defined QRS complexes. There's no defined P wave, T wave. It just honestly looks like a little a little kid just like took a crayon and started squibbling every, everywhere. This is what you're going to see as V-fib. This is a little bit more of what's called a, a, a coarse V-fib. Whereas whenever you see something that's like a little bit finer, this is something that's a little bit more fine V-fib. Almost uh, to the point of like asystole. Okay, so you see this, yeah, you're not going to be worrying about rate at this point in time, but again, let's just go ahead for the sake of it, let's go ahead and calculate something. So let's find somewhere where, okay, about right here and about right here, it's, a, it's about a box, maybe even kind of like less than a box. So we're going to say, just for the heck of it, let's go and say it's about 350 beats per minute, around that. Again, fibrillation moves anywhere from 350 to 450 beats per minute, all right? So this soccer is going really fast. R to R interval, it's really hard to determine where the R, R wave is really in some of these. It's super abnormal and really the R to R interval, it's just, it's extremely irregular. Okay, it's at this point, it's really hard to even determine where it's actually an R wave and from the next R wave to next R wave. So it's really inconsistent. There's no P wave. We don't even have to, you know, worry about that and if there's no p wave there's definitely not going to be an association between the sa node av node bundle of hiss bundle branches per kenji so there is av dissociation here okay and qrs complexes they're wide they're definitely wide you don't even have to really worry about this but again if you're kind of really wanting to look at it for some of these you're going to see that they're greater than three boxes it's no doubt about it but if you see this ekg okay you see someone who is in V-fib. The first thing you need to determine, it doesn't even matter if they have a pulse or not. Okay, V-fib is a type of arrhythmia that you can't synchronize cardiovert somebody. So the first thing you do is you start your high quality CPR. You start your chest compressions, okay? And you try to get an airway on the person. The next thing that you're gonna be doing while you're doing the CPR, okay? During this process of the cycles of CPR, you're gonna to wanna to try to have epinephrine ready, okay? So epinephrine is gonna be a big medication that you're gonna give. Another one that you can give is amiodarone, okay? But after you've been giving these medications and you've gone through a cycle of CPR, your next step is gonna be defibrillation, okay? In other words, you're gonna be electrically shocking someone and it doesn't really matter where it is, in this rhythm, it doesn't matter if it's specifically on the R wave, you're shocking them that you're gonna to try to completely depolarize the heart, hoping that it'll go into a normal rhythm. And again, if this defibrillation doesn't work, you go back to CPR. As you're doing the CPR, again, you can be giving epinephrine, you could be giving amiodarone. The ACLS you know, algorithm says, be thinking about your H's and your T's. In other words, think about the causes, okay? What could be the reason why this person is in V-fib? Are they hypoxic? Okay. Are they hypovolemic? Or do they have a low blood pressure? And that's because they're compensating for the hypovolemia. They're increasing their heart rate. Right? Are they hypo or hyperkalemic? Okay. So hypo or hyperkalemic. All right. Um, are they in acidosis? In other words, do they have a lot of protons? Okay, are they in some type of acidosis? Or are they hypothermic? So where their body is trying to increase the heart rate to be able to uh, you know, generate some type of heat. Okay, these are things that we have to think about. What if it's T's? What if it's a thrombus? Okay, obviously some type of um, anti-thrombolytic. Okay, so some type of thrombolytic, not antithrombolytic. Give them some type of antiplatelet, anticoagulant, thrombolytic, or maybe some type of embolectomy. Maybe they have a tension pneumothorax. Oh man, you can needle decompress it. So tension pneumothorax, it could be due to some type of cardiac tamponade. Maybe there's fluid buildup around the heart and it's actually strangulating the heart, right? Do a pericardiosynthesis. 
Maybe it's toxin related. Maybe they have cyanide poisoning. These are all things that we have to be able to think about whenever we're going through someone who is having V-fib. Okay, so you see someone with V-fib, right away you get on the chest, you start doing CPR, you do that for two minutes, right? As you're doing this, you wanna defibrillate them. If they still haven't gone back into a, a, a rhythm that we want, you can obviously go back, start CPR, delivering uh, epinephrine or amiodarone. And again, while you're doing that, thinking of your H's and T's, okay? Because again, these are all things that we can treat. So once we've talked about this, you should have a very, very strong understanding of what V-fib is. It's a very dangerous arrhythmia that needs to be treated quickly, okay? I hope these videos really made sense. I hope you guys liked them and enjoyed it. If you guys did, please hit that like button, comment down in the comment section, and please subscribe. Also, if you guys get a chance, go down in our description box. In there, we'll have links to our Facebook and our Instagram. If you guys want to go check that out, leave some comments. We would truly appreciate it, and we'll try to get back to you. Also, if you guys want, we have a Patreon link there. If you guys want to go ahead, donate even a dollar. We would truly appreciate it. helps us to continue to have money to make videos for you guys' enjoyment. Uh, Ninja Nerds, we love you. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and finish up this EKG uh, Rate Rhythm Series part with uh, Heart Blocks. Hope to see you guys there. As always, Ninja Nerds, until next time.